knitting. This is a really useful technique when you're doing cuffs or socks, anywhere where you need a sort of stretchy opening because it's probably the most stretchy form of casting on in knitting. It's a little bit more fiddly than some of the other cast on methods to get your head round, but once you've got it, it you get into the flow and it's actually quite straightforward. So I'll show you how to do it. You only need one knitting needle to, to cast on with this method and obviously a ball of yarn. And the first thing to do is to actually pull out quite a long tail of yarn, hence the name long tail cast on. It's better to have too much than too little and you use more than you think with, with doing this cast on method. So I've pulled out quite a, a long length of yarn there. And now I'm just going to do a, a slip knot to get things started. So the way I do a slip knot is I wrap the yarn around my finger twice, I lift the left over the right, and that forms a, a twist in the yarn there. And then I wrap it around again, and then lift left over right again. Pull it tight, and that gives you your slip knot. And as you can see, you can slip the yarn through the knot. So now we've got our long tail, which I, I always hold to the front, and our ball of yarn, which I'll put to the back there. Time to get your knitting needle and pop it through the, the slip knot with the long tail to the front. Now is the slightly tricky bit to get your head round. Um, so you need to keep the long tail to the front, the ball of the yarn to the back, and grab hold of them between your ring and little finger. Um, so you're holding both pieces of yarn there, with again with the long tail to the front and the yarn to the back that's joined to the ball. And now with your thumb and index finger, you want to put them both through that gap between the two pieces of yarn. So if I just show you that again, holding it tight with my fingers and then I pop my index finger and thumb through. So you're holding the two pieces of yarn apart and you've still got the young, long tail to the front and the bit attached to the ball of yarn at the back. Now the next thing to do is just bring your thumb over to the left and you form a sort of Z shape with the yarn there. Um, make sure you hold on to the needle with your finger uh, to the to the stitch on the yarn, to the stitch on the needle with your finger just to stop it sliding off. I'll just show you again there. Push them through, pull the thumb over to the left to make that kind of Z shape. Now, what you're going to do to form the, the first cast on stitch is you're going to, with your needle, go over the top and under the piece wrapped around the bottom of your thumb to hook it up. And then you're going to go over the top and under the piece of yarn hooked around your index finger. And then you're going to pull that through. And then pull it tight with the long tail of yarn. And that forms your first cast on stitch. So I'll show you that again. Hold the yarn tight between your pinky and ring finger, thumb and index finger through and pull your thumb over to the left to form that Z. Hopefully you can see the Z shape that forms. So then you go over and under the bottom piece, over and under the top piece and pull through. And pull that tight. Keep holding on with your fingers on the needle and start again. Pull through to make that Z shape, over and under the bottom, over and under the top, and pull that through again. Keeping that long tail to the front, get hold of it with your fingers, put your other two fingers through, over and under the bottom, over and under the top, and loop it through. Let's just show you that once more, so hold on with your fingers, push through, 
with your thumb and index finger, pull your thumb over to the left to form that Z, and then you're going over and under the bottom, over and under the top, and you can see actually what happens is that forms a loop over your thumb, and that's what you pull tight round the stitch there. Show you that again. Index and thumb through, over to the left to form that Z, over and under the bottom, over and under the top. Maybe your stitch is forming on the needle and you've got this loop over your thumb which you let go of and you pull tight with the long tail. And you just carry on in this way until you've got the desired number of stitches. And after a while it starts to become like it makes a bit more sense and you can get a bit quicker. And you do find that you can probably do a few stitches without having to reset and grab the yarn again. But I find maybe, depending on the yarn you're using, maybe every three or four stitches you have to sort of reset and catch hold of the yarn again in your fingers. I also noticed that the long tail bit of yarn tends to untwist a little as I go. So every so often I stop and just put a bit of a twist back on that yarn. I think it's the way you turn the yarn, it just naturally untwists that, that long tail at the front. And there you go. So there we go, we've cast on our long tail, our, our stitches using long tail of yarn method.